In this tutorial, we will learn how to create a structural optimization using the Millipede plugin for Grasshopper. So let's get started. Okay, go to this website and click on Millipede. Then click download millipede.zip. Once download, you need to extract the files. So extract all and extract. Once done that, you get this libraries folder. This is the folder we want. So go to Rhino and type in Grasshopper. Then in Grasshopper, click File, Special Folders and Components. This is where all Grasshopper plugins are stored. So now go back to the Libraries folder and drag it to the Grasshopper folder. Just restart it and it's done. Now when you type in Grasshopper, You will now see that the Millipede plugin is shown. Go to Topostruct 3D and Boundary. Place it in the viewport. In Rhino, we have a box. So now type in BREP, right click, and set one BREP. Click on the box and drag this to the boundary. Next thing we need support. So place it in the viewport and in Rhino we have support. This is where the load is allowed to go down to the ground. And it's important that some parts are inside the boundary box and some part outside of it. Go to BREP and set multiple BREPs. Now you need the load region. So in Rhino we have some boxes that are upon, upon the boundary. Make sure that these also are some part inside the boundary. So create BREP and create select multiple BREPs. The last thing here we need is density region. This will be regions or areas that not are allowed to have structure. So just uh, set some volumes there you don't want the structure to be. So select these and go to BREP, right click, set multiple BREPs. Go to Topostract 3D and then Topostract 3D model. What we want to do now is we want to connect all these components to this 3D model. While doing this, we need to press down the Shift key to be able to connect multiple. Okay, now Go to Topostruct 3D and then Topostruct 3D Solver. This is the component that will create the, the structural optimization and will run it. To be able to see the result, we need a 3D ISO mesh. So connect the workstation to the mesh and the menu to the D input. It will allow the mesh to read all the data from the workstation. Now you can create sliders by just double click and type in a number. This will be like the uh, like the settings for the workstation. Okay, connect the first slider to the SWC, the self-weight coefficient and the second slider we just can enable this workstation so it doesn't run because it takes a lot of data 
then the second slider will be the optimization iteration. It will be like the quality of the mesh, you can say. Then we have the smoothing. And now the T, that is the target density. And the last one is initial densities. And this is a bit tricky to understand, but the best thing is just to try it out uh, and see the different results. So now you can enable the workstation and it will run. To view the result, a good way is to set the viewport to wireframe. Once done that, right click on the mesh component and select the flexion. Now you will see the result. To get this mesh into Rhino, right click on the mesh, click bake, select a layer and press OK. Now it exists in Rhino. With the viewport ghosted, you can see the mesh better. You can see where the compression is and where it's not. Make sure you play around with these input numbers and this step button to make a high, more high quality mesh. But it will take a bit more data, but it will get a more clear result. Uh, so, just to show you, if you click this step button, the workstation will try to optimize the mesh. And you can see how the volume is affecting the mesh. Let's try to bake this once again. We can compare them to different results. So just go to Ghosted and see the result. And that's all for now. Thank you for watching.